Hi, Brian Evans here. I want to take some time to talk about the investments and just kind of do a, a, not a deep dive into facts and figures, but more just kind of an overall understanding of what we're invested in. I, I do know I talk a lot on the radio and certainly write about uh, more uh, alternative investments such as Delaware Statutory Trusts for 1031 exchanges, or private non-traded real estate investment trusts, maybe annuities that offer uh, increasing lifetime cash flow or fixed index universal life policies that offer tax-free cash flow in retirement. Uh, often I over don't spend a lot of time talking about the stock market investments because uh, you know the stock market is what it is. But certainly as we added uh, some positions uh, over the course of the COVID uh, reaction, outside of just the standard um, S&P 500 allocation, something like that. We actually targeted certain areas. I thought it'd be a good idea just to kind of go through uh, what we own, because a lot of people know that they own uh, some different holdings. Uh, maybe they don't understand what's inside of them. Uh, that's certainly understandable because ETFs, which is what we use, don't really list a whole lot of information in the name. You can't really tell what's behind that. So what, what is that? So I'm just want to go back to the basics here. I use a exchange traded fund portfolio as opposed to buying individual stocks or mutual funds. Why is that? Well, with the exchange traded funds, I can get a much more diverse set of holdings and I can target what I own. So I can say, I only want a particular area of the market, say biotech stocks. I can buy a biotech ETF. I don't have to go out and research all 100 different companies and put them in there. I can get the ETF and it's gonna have all of the different companies in there. So it's easy to, to do that. Uh, ETFs tend to be cheaper than mutual funds as far as the underlying expenses, sometimes much cheaper. So I prefer to use them that for that reason. Also, you're not buying someone else's capital gains if uh, you're buying an ETF as opposed to a mutual fund. And ETFs can trade intraday mutual funds. You have to wait till the end of the day. So there aren't really a lot of reasons to buy a, a particular mutual fund unless you like the particular manager of that fund. So uh, we, we tend to uh, uh, I build the portfolios that we have using exchange traded funds for various reasons. Now, so what I did is I took my most common uh, asset allocation risk tolerance model called the growth model all of the models that we have, whether you're in the aggressive growth, uh, moderate or conservative, they kind of have the same holdings, just in different percentages. So the more aggressive your model, the more you're going to have in uh, equities, uh, stocks. Uh, the less aggressive, the more you're going to have in bonds, less in equities. But the equities that you have will be very similar. Uh, you just have less of them in, the, in a conservative portfolio as opposed to a, one. So I, I took the most common one that, that I have people in, and I wanted to go over the top 20 holdings. So I have a program where we're, we are able to put in the different percentages of all the different exchange traded funds that we own, and then uh, C, which uh, is into these different funds, it knows how much is in each one, pulls it out, combines them, and builds a chart for us so we can see what we own. So for most of you, your biggest holding, unless you have individual stocks in your portfolio, but if you just have the exchange traded fund model, I've got my little cheat sheet here, so I'm gonna read, read off some of this for you. But the biggest uh, holding in the models is Apple. We all know what Apple does. Um, uh, Forrest Gump uh, thinks they sell apples, but we all know they sell iPhones. And uh, that's, that's kind of their, their big market. And so that's the, the biggest holding. Uh, that we have in our portfolios, followed by Microsoft, their prime competitor. So uh, Microsoft is, is certainly less into the hardware and more into software and now cloud services. So they've had a huge run up. Uh, I would attribute most of that to the cloud. It used to be, you know, we'd hold all of our data on site and have need lots of hardware to store it and back it up and all that stuff. Now, most of most of the softwares we buy and most of our storage is over the cloud. I know our firm certainly uh, uses the cloud and so that's become a big market. The third biggest holding in the portfolios is Amazon. So uh, we're gonna have a lot
lot of Seattle and San Francisco uh, companies in this lineup. We all know what Amazon uh, does. We know it's been taking off due to COVID. Um, they're basically taking over the world as far as selling stuff online. And uh, so that's our third biggest. Fourth biggest is Facebook. So a lot of people are chatting with each other because they can't see each other in person. I remember years ago, uh, I was on a CNBC Closing Bell and the moderator asked me about Facebook. They just came out with their earnings and there were two of us on, on the panel. And one guy said, nah, it's lost its pizzazz. It's going away. I don't think it's worth more than about eight bucks a share. I think it was at 50 at the time. And I said, well, it's probably worth at least a hundred. And uh, I remember uh, Kelly Evans asked me, well, Brian, a lot of people are saying Facebook has lost its uh, sex appeal and, and its coolness. What do you think about the coolness of, of Facebook? And I said, well, Kelly, I've been a CPA for 30 years. That's the first time anybody's ever asked my opinion on what's cool. And so she got a laugh out of that. But uh, all, I, all I knew is Facebook was making a lot of money and it didn't cost much to add new users. So it's not like a car manufacturer, if they add a billion dollars in sales, they got to spend, you know, 900 billion or, uh, you know, 900 million in, in uh, you know, steel and, and processes and people and labor. And Facebook ads, some of these software companies, when they add a, a billion dollars in sales, they just got a, you know, a little bit more uh, access to the cloud. And that's about it. They don't have to hire people or, or buy materials or metal or rubber or anything like that. So they really can uh, increase their profit margins dramatically because of the kind of businesses they're in. Next on the list is Visa. So of course, now you can't even use cash in a lot of places. So they they had a nice run here uh, with the credit card. Uh, NVIDIA is next. They, they make chips and uh, not potato chips, but graphic chips. So think uh, video games and any other graphic uh, presentation models, they, they are the worldwide leader in visual computing technologies. Next on the list is Google otherwise known as Alphabet. Uh, they conduct most of the online search uh, traffic. And as you click on things, they get a penny here, five cents there, a dollar there, they just keep adding up. So essentially they're an advertising company. Uh, next on the list, MasterCard, much like Visa. Uh, then we got Intel, the world's largest semiconductor company. Again, seeing a pattern here, a lot of this is uh, types of companies that are doing great post COVID, uh, whether it's how you buy things, how you order things, what you order them on, the software you use to communicate, the chips needed to run this stuff, uh, the, the searches, the communication with other people of Facebook. So I'm seeing a trend here. Um, I think that was about the first 10. The next ones are Adobe. So that's a uh, presentation software there. They sell subscriptions to that. Uh, most of us PDF files, uh, that's Adobe. Next on the list, finally something outside of this area, Johnson & Johnson. They have pharmaceuticals, of course, and medical devices, consumer products, that kind of thing. Then it's Accenture. A lot of people probably haven't heard that that company, they're a consulting firm, and they consult, of course, on digital media, the cloud, security uh, for large companies. Uh, so that's what they do. Then we have Cisco, which is a networking company, uh, hardware and telecom uh, networks. So kind of along the same lines as everything else, just more of a business application. Uh, next is a little bit of a surprise, Texas Instruments, uh, analog chips. There's a lot of different uses for chips, whether you know we've got one company that does graphics, one that does uh, computers more, this one does analog uh, systems. There's a lot of applications for that. Then it's the first uh, financial firm, JP Morgan. Um, they've been around a long time. Uh, one of the largest financial services services uh, companies in the world. Then it's Walmart. Uh, we all know what Walmart is. They're gonna try to come out and compete with Amazon. Um, not sure how that will go, but uh, I suppose any competition is, is good. Uh, next on the list, everybody's heard of Costco. So we have another Pacific Northwest entry on the list. Uh, frankly, my favorite store. Uh, so I love Costco. Next on the list is United Health Group. They are the largest healthcare services company in the world. 
And the last one on the list, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, Warren Buffett's company. They own more than nine, 90 subsidiaries in insurance, railroads, utilities, manufacturing services, retail, home building. Uh, pretty much they own everything except everything else that was on this list because they, they don't really do technology companies. So as you can see there, some of the bigger companies do have a heavier overweight in your portfolios, uh, primarily because I certainly did overweight uh, three technology sector funds. Uh, the NASDAQ was one, uh, software uh, ETF was another, and that's where we got the Visa MasterCard part in there. And then finally, semiconductors was another. That's why you're seeing a lot of semiconductors. They, they would drive all this stuff. And pretty much everything you own has a computer chip in it anymore, uh, even your credit card. Um, and then I uh, also bought the uh, healthcare sector, uh, biotech sector. I didn't see any biotech stocks in here, but that's because they're just smaller in nature. So they're not gonna hit our top 20. Uh, we did consumer staples and gold. And so, these were the, the companies that, that came out on top for, the, for our top holdings uh, generally in your portfolios. I just thought it'd be nice to kind of review that so you can say, oh, I don't just own some ETFs. I actually own uh, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Visa, Google, MasterCard, Johnson Johnson, Walmart, Costco, Berkshire Hathaway, you know, some of these, these names, those are what you own. And so that's what you're seeing reflected when the value of your statement goes up or down, uh, it's a reflection of how these companies are doing. So I hope you found this interesting and uh, appreciate you listening to this and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.